An important part of setup on the Hartford thread roller is adjusting the dies. This television training tape will show you how to perform the required adjustments. The first die adjustment is to adjust the die height. This adjustment consists of changing the packing under the moving die until the top of the moving die is level with the top of the stationary die. If one die is higher than the other, the blanks will be rolled with uneven pressure. This will cause unacceptable threads under the heads. To check die height, disengage the starter finger and jog the ram to the end of the return stroke. Use a straight edge to determine whether the tops of the dies are flush. If one die top is higher than the other, adjust this by adding shims, removing shims, or replacing shims under the moving die. Adjust only the moving die packing. The top of the stationary die must remain level with the feed rails and the starter finger. There are two precautions which you must observe as you adjust die height. First, be sure the top of the moving die is above or even with the top of the wear plate on the ram. If it is below the wear plate, the blank heads may catch on the edge of the wear plate at the end of the forward stroke. The second precaution is to never install more than three shims under a die. If there are more than three shims under a die, there will be a certain amount of give as the blanks are rolled. This will cause poorly made threads. If at any time during setup you find more than three shims under a die, remove the shims. Hold them together and measure the total thickness of the shims. Then, select a single thicker shim or a steel plate of equal thickness to replace the shims. Adjust the die packing under the moving die until the tops of the dies are flush. The next die adjustment is to match the dies. Matching the dies means adjusting the dies so that the threads rolled by both dies are aligned. Matching the dies is sometimes called lining up the dies. Die match may be accomplished in two ways. First, one die may be raised or lowered to align the thread forms. Second, one die may be moved ahead or back. Doing this changes the relative position of the thread forms at the start of thread rolling. The second method of adjusting die match is normally used on the Hartford thread roller. Matching the dies is accomplished by the eccentric on the end of the pitman arm. The purpose of the eccentric is to adjust the moving die ahead or back to adjust die match. Before adjusting die match, you must check the die match. Checking the die match will determine the direction of adjustment that is required. To check the die match, engage the starter finger. Place a blank in the bottom of the feed rails. Jog the machine until the starter finger is completely retracted. Then jog the ram forward until the blank has turned about one half of a revolution. Make a mark on the blank head on the side facing the stationary die. Now you must roll the blank back out of the dies. Retract the starter finger so that it does not push against the blank. Since the ram cannot be jogged in reverse, hand crank the blank back out of the dies. When the blank is released from the dies, remove it. Inspect the blank. You will see two sets of grooves on the blank. The two sets of grooves will be aligned if the dies are matched. Dies which are not matched will produce grooves which are not aligned. The grooves made by the moving die will be to the left of the mark you made on the head of the blank. On this blank, the grooves on the left are slightly lower. Therefore, the moving die thread forms are too low and must be raised. This is the draw bolt. The purpose of the draw bolt is to clamp the eccentric into place.
To adjust die match, first loosen the draw bolt. Marked on the eccentric is the letter L and a letter R. If the eccentric is turned toward the letter L, this will have the effect of lowering the moving die thread forms. If the eccentric is turned toward the letter R, this will have the effect of raising the moving die thread forms. Use a tool like this, which is called a timing wrench, to turn the eccentric. Turn the eccentric in the appropriate direction. Then tighten the draw bolt. Check die match again. Continue to adjust die match until the grooves which are formed are perfectly aligned. The next adjustment is to fine adjust die squeeze. After the dies were installed, they were rough adjusted until the blank fit snugly between them. Now that the dies are matched, you must fine adjust die squeeze until the dies produce threads within tolerance. The reason for starting with a minimum amount of die squeeze, then gradually increasing it, is to prevent overloading the dies. Overloading means rolling blanks with too much die squeeze. Here you can see a screw which was rolled with too much squeeze. Overloading forces too much material into the die thread forms. Overloading will damage or break the dies or damage the machine. As you fine adjust die squeeze on gimlet point dies, you must check the cutoff clearance. This is the cutoff edge on a gimlet point die. The cutoff edges cut off the excess blank material as the gimlet points are formed. To check the cutoff clearance, hand crank the ram until the cutoff edges are opposite each other. Watch the cutoff edges to be sure that they do not hit each other. Slide a piece of 6,000 shim stock between the cutoff edges of the dies. There must never be less than six thousandths of an inch clearance between the cutoff edges of gimlet point dies. Having less than six thousandths cutoff clearance could allow the cutoff edges to strike each other. This will damage the dies. The fine die squeeze adjustment is done with the slide housing lock screws snug down. In order to be sure that the slide housing lock screws are just snug, first loosen the lock screws. Then re-tighten them using light pressure. Jog a blank through the dies. Handle newly rolled blanks cautiously. They may be hot as they fall from the dies. Allow the blank to cool, then measure the major diameter. The major diameter will be below tolerance on this blank. Loosen the lock screws, then turn the die squeeze adjusting nuts clockwise to increase die squeeze. Turn both adjusting nuts an equal amount. Be sure that you tighten the lock screws. Thread roll and measure another blank. Further adjust die squeeze.